In our previous video, we used an independent samples t-test to compare PACER scores, a physical fitness test measuring aerobic capacity, for two groups of students, those with asthma and those without asthma. In this video, we're going to see how we can do the same analysis in multiple regression. To do that, let's start with an approach called dummy coding in which we make dummy variables or called dummy codes. Now, it may have dummy in the name, but there's nothing dopey about dummy coding. To code two groups using dummy coding, we create a dichotomous variable. A variable with two values, specifically a 0 or a 1, depending on which group a person is in. For this example, our two groups are whether or not a student has asthma. So first, determine which of the two groups is your primary interest, and we'll code that group as 1. Then make the other group, the group you're going to compare that first group to, equal to 0. In this case, we're really interested in students with asthma. So I'm going to code them 1, and the students without asthma I'll code as 0. You then make a variable containing that information. And here I'll dive, make a little diversion a moment and suggest that you name that variable after whichever group is coded 1. So given I'm particularly interested in the students with asthma and they're coded as 1's, I'll make a new variable called asthma. Now, of course, you can call the variable anything you want, but I like naming it after the group coded 1 because it makes things easy and clear later on. As we'll see in a moment, this variable will be the effect of having asthma. I could call it dummy1 or d1 or Fred and Ethel if I want, but then six months later I may have forgotten what it was and I'll be like, oh no, what do I do? I mean, I've seen that happen and it's not pretty. Naming it after the group coded 1 lets you know exactly what the variable is measuring. Oh, it's called asthma. It's measuring whether they have asthma. And it lets you know exactly how it was coded. It's called asthma, so it's the kids with asthma are coded 1. Right? No guessing. It's all very clear. So, going on, the actual data when we're making this variable will look something like this table. Each row is one student, right? And Greg here is our first student. Greg has asthma, so he has a value of 1 for my dummy variable asthma. Marsha, second student, doesn't have asthma, so Marsha has a value of 0 for the dummy variable. Peter also doesn't have asthma, so he's also coded 0 on our asthma dummy variable. But Jan does have asthma, and so she's also coded 1 on the asthma dummy variable, just like Greg. Right? Pretty straightforward, right? Then you just keep doing that all the way down for all of your students. Now, you may look at this and ask yourself, well, I got two groups. Don't I need two variables? Should I make a another dummy variable for students who don't have asthma? But if you think about it for a bit, you may recognize that a second variable is completely redundant with the first variable. If you don't have asthma, then you're already perfectly identified by that zero in the asthma variable as not having asthma. A second variable would tell you absolutely nothing. All right? So notice that two groups only require a single dummy variable to represent both of those groups. 
We'll see a pattern with this later. All right, so with that, we're ready to run our regression analysis using a dummy variable for our dichotomous predictor, right? Let's see what we find. Well, here's our descriptive information for the variables in our regression analysis. Notice that it's based on the total N of 708, 789 students, right? The overall mean for PACER scores across all 789 students is 29.482. But notice the mean for asthma. The mean for asthma is 0.129, again, across all 789 students. Does that 0.129 tell us anything? It actually does. Because it's coded 0 and 1, the mean for a dummy variable is the proportion of the sample that's coded 1. In this case, it's the proportion of the sample with asthma because the kids with asthma are coded 1. So you look at this and you immediately know, hey, 12.9% of the sample has asthma. I mean, it's staring me right in the face there. I don't have to go run some extra analyses to, to know how many students have asthma. It's right there, very handy, right? Pretty cool. Now, here's the ANOVA table for our regression where I've again entered asthma as my predictor of PACER scores. We have one predictor and 789 students. So our F with one and 787 degrees of freedom is equal to 5.816, which is statistically significant with a P of 0 0.016. If we then move on to the model summary table, it tells us that our R squared is 0 0.007. So asthma status accounts for 0.7% of the variance in PACER scores. Not a lot, but it was statistically significant, right? As we just saw with the ANOVA table. In this case, uh, that large sample size uh, gives us the additional power to detect a difference, even if it's a little small. All right. Now, finally, let's look at the coefficient table. <laughs> this is where it really starts to get interesting. Our intercept is 30.028, and the asthma effect is negative 4.224. Sound familiar? Together, that makes our regression equation, the predicted PACER score for a student, is equal to 30.028 minus 4.224 times their asthma score. Now, because this is a very simple example, we can actually pretty quickly solve for each of our asthma groups. So let's do that. Let's first look at the uh, regression equation for students without asthma and solve for them, all right? The um, predicted PACER score for students without asthma would just be 30.028 minus 4.224 times their asthma score. So I just plug in the score for someone without asthma, which is zero. Well right? Negative 4.224 times 0 is 0. So that just drops out of the equation and we just have the predicted PACER score is 30.028. You see that? The intercept or the constant is the predicted PACER score for students without asthma. More generally, the intercept is the predicted score for the group coded zero. But there's more to it than that. If we remember back to the t-test analysis, 30.028, right, was also the mean for students without asthma. Because we're not controlling for anything else, in simple models like this, the intercept is the mean for the students coded zero on our dummy variable. 
And if we think about it, that kind of makes sense. If I knew nothing else other than which group someone is in, what score would I predict for people in that group? Right? I'd predict the group mean. And notice the regression equation for the students without asthma does pre accurately predict the group mean for those students. Pretty cool. Now let's solve the regression equation for students who have asthma. The predicted PACER score for students with asthma would just be 30.028 minus 4.224 times their asthma score, which in this case is equal to 1, right? Well, negative 4.224 times 1 is negative 4.224. So I just subtract 4.224 from 30.028, and I get the predicted PACER score is 25.804 for the students with asthma. Now, does that sound familiar? Right? 25.804 was the mean for the students with asthma. We saw that back in the t-test analysis. So the regression equation also accurately predicts the mean for students with asthma. Now, notice how it did that, though. We started with 30.028, which was the mean for the students without asthma. And then we subtracted 4.224 from that in order to get the mean for the students with asthma. That negative 4.224, the regression coefficient for our asthma effect, is literally the difference between the mean for the students with asthma, 25.804, and the mean for the students without asthma, 30.028. More generally, the regression coefficient for a specific dummy variable is the difference between the mean for the group coded 1 on that dummy variable and the mean for the group coded 0 on that dummy variable. It's, it's telling us how much higher or lower the group coded 1 is relative to the group coded 0. Now, because the regression coefficients for dummy variables indicate again how much higher or lower the group coded 1 is relative to that group coded 0, the group coded zero is sometimes referred to as the comparison group, or more formally as the referent group. In this case, the students with asthma have scores that are 4.224 points lower than the referent group, the students without asthma. Now, we've seen a lot of numbers, so it may not have been obvious how the regression analysis gave us the same information as the t-test. So let's look at the two analyses together. Notice that both gave us the same t-score, right? And they both have the same degrees of freedom, except for the regression analysis, the degrees of freedom were reported in the ANOVA table, but it was 787. It was the same number and they both have the same p-value of 0 0.016, which makes sense given the t's are the same and the degrees of freedom are the same. The, the p-value should be the same. But notice the regression coefficient for the asthma effect is the same as the mean difference is for the t-test. But we just saw, right, that the regression coefficient for our dummy variable is the difference between the, the mean for the group coded 1 and the mean for the group coded 0. So they're the same thing, right? And also notice that the standard error of the difference in the t-test is the same as the standard error for the regression coefficient in our regression model. And that's because they're the same thing as well, right? The standard error of the difference in the t-test is the standard error for the difference in the group means. And the standard error for the regression coefficient in the regression analysis is the standard error for that coefficient. 
But that coefficient is the difference in the group means. <laughs> so again, it's the same thing as well. Pretty cool. Similarly, the 95% confidence interval for the difference in means is in the t-test is the same as the 95% confidence interval for the regression coefficient because the regression coefficient is the difference in the means. It's all the same, right? Plus, if we go back to the sample means themselves, we saw that the sample means reported in the t-test were the same as the sample means we estimated in the regression. Now here, I, I want to pause for a moment because this is true in this simple model because we have no other variables in the regression equation. But as we saw in earlier multiple regression videos, including our videos on statistical control, as we add variables in multiple regression, the coefficient for one variable will be the effect of that variable controlling for all of the other variables in the model. As a result, later on, as we add additional variables to our regression model, we'll be estimating the adjusted mean after controlling for all those other effects and differences between our groups. But we'll get to that later on. For now, this does a nice job of showing how you can get the same result in either an independent sample t-test or in multiple regression. In fact, you can think of an independent samples t-test as simply a special case of regression, a regression where you only have one dichotomous predictor variable. Multiple regression is just a more general approach that can handle this type of data and other types of data and models as well. <laughs> Pretty cool. Now, with that, let's wrap up this video. In our next video, we'll look at dummy coding when we have three or more groups, not just two on a dichotomy. Ooh, great. All right. See you then. Take care.